In this video, we're gonna be discussing the best calorie counting app you should be using, as well as the pros and the cons of it. In my experience with tracking macros, I have to say that I think my Fitness Pal is the best tracking app out there. My Fitness Pal has been in the game for quite some time now. I started tracking about four years ago now. I have never really had any problems with the app. Of course, I'm going to discuss some things you need to look out for when it comes to my Fitness Pal, but overall, it's a great tracking app and I highly recommend that you download it and use that. So before we talk about my Fitness Pal, most important thing that I need you to hear is if you are using these calorie tracking apps to give you a starting calorie number, you need to stop what you're doing right now and go watch my previous video on how to calculate your starting calories because my fitness pal and many of the other calculators and tracking apps out there are notorious for giving starting calorie numbers that are extremely low. I've seen people get 1,000 calories to start off their diet, 1,200. It even gave me a really low calorie number to start, and you don't want to do that. You want to start off actually higher so that you can optimize your metabolism and you can preserve muscle mass and have a more enjoyable dieting experience because if you start off really low calorie, it's going to be really hard for you to continue getting to your goal over time without pretty much going down to nothing at that point because you're starting off already super low. So go watch that video if you haven't checked that out and now we can actually dive into my fitness pal. All right, so let's get into the five pros and cons of my fitness pal and keep in mind that a lot of the pros and the cons might be very similar with other apps. I'm just listing why I personally like my fitness pal and what I think you might need to watch out for with my fitness pal. So pro number one is that you can scan, create, and search for your food. So I love that you can, first of all, scan your food because that's going to be the most accurate. If you use their database, it is a great tool to have, especially like if you're eating out and you don't have anything to scan, obviously, because you're at the dinner table at a restaurant. That's what I love the um, database for, but the scanning is going to be the most accurate because you are taking the nutritional information right off the box of whatever you're eating. So I love that they have the scanning feature for that reason. The database is perfect for when you are eating out and you're trying to still fit your meal into your daily calories. So a perfect example is, let's say you go to Starbucks or if you go to Panera and you get a coffee or if you get like breakfast or something, you can search up Panera and their whole menu is gonna come up. Um, it's not like this for every single restaurant, but they really do have the majority of the restaurants out there, which is super convenient and really helpful so that you're not kind of just guessing like what you just ate. Creating a food is really nice because if you don't find what you're looking for in the database, you could just create your own food based on the label that you have or if you're making a recipe and you have like the certain ingredients that you wanna make as like one big recipe, you have the opportunity to do that. Pro number two is that my fitness pal is pretty organized. I believe it starts you off with four different meals. So it says meal one, meal two, meal three, and it either says meal four or snacks. If you wanted to have more meals than that, you can actually add more. So you can, in the settings, you can add more so that it's six meals a day, five, five meals a day, um, and you can also rename those meals. So if you don't want it to say meal one, if you want it to say breakfast instead, or pre-workout, post-workout, so that you don't get confused <laughs> about which meal is which, then you can do so in the settings. Pro number three is the nutritional breakdown on my fitness pal. So it doesn't just show you the macros and the calories, which are, yes, very important. It also shows you the vitamins that you're consuming and the fiber and the sodium and the sugar. If these are things that you are concerned about, you have the option to view that as you're logging your food in throughout the day. And I just think that's really cool because sometimes we get really caught up in just hitting our macros and hitting that calorie number and we tend to forget about fiber and you know all the other factors like what vitamins are you getting enough of what are you not getting enough of are you having all of your micronutrients like those are really important too so i love that it shows you that on the app as well 
pro number four is my personal favorite as a coach because I literally rave about this to all of my clients because it saves so much time when you are tracking is that you can copy your meals to the next day. So if you logged your whole day today, for example, if you had your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and you're gonna have the same thing tomorrow, you don't have to redo all of that all over again the next day. You can actually just copy it to the next day so you literally don't have to do anything. You don't have to re-input or rescan or research for any of the food. The only thing that um, you know you might have to do is maybe adjust the serving sizes if you don't have as much food the next day. But in terms of logging everything, you don't have to pretty much do a thing. So super efficient in that part. Pro number five is that it's free. <laughs> um, there is a paid version and all the paid version really is is that it lets you customize your macro and shows you the uh, macro breakdown for every single meal that you have. I did have the paid version, but honestly, you really don't need it because if you know what your macros and calories are, that's all you really have to know. You don't have to have the app telling you how many carbs you have left, how many calories you have left. You can actually view all that information on the nutrition page. It tells you what your macros are based on what you've added up for the day. So what I do and what I tell my clients to do is just keep your macros in your notes on your phone so that you can just match it up to the nutrition page. Moving into the cons now of my fitness pal. Now, these cons aren't necessarily like reasons why you should not use my fitness pal, but they are reasons that you need to be more aware of my fitness pal for and um, just things to keep in mind when you're first using the app because um, a lot of these reasons I didn't really know about when I first started tracking macros. So really, really important that you know these next five things. <laughs> So the first con is what I just mentioned before about not being able to personalize your macros. You only are allowed to have like a percentage. So if you wanted to do 40% protein, 30% carbs, 30% fat, for example, that's all that you're pretty much allowed to do when it comes to customization. You're not allowed to like specifically say, I want my protein to be 150, et cetera, et cetera. You can just keep it in your notes what your macros are. You don't really need to have the paid version for that. If you choose a percentage on my fitness pal, and it's telling you these are what your macros are and it's like sending you alerts saying oh you're over your carbs for today you're under your protein just don't listen to it because again all you have to do is look at your numbers on the nutrition page and if those numbers on the nutrition page match what your macros are at the end of the day or after you logged for the full day in advance then that's all that matters con number two and this one's actually pretty interesting um, because the title of the video is what is the best calorie counting app, right? However, I don't want you to think about this in terms of calorie counting. And um, I feel like my fitness pal and a lot of other calorie counting apps really, really do focus on your calories only and just tracking your calories um, instead of more so focusing on the macros. So the macros by default, if you are tracking your macros, you're also going to be tracking your calories because your macros are calories too. Your carbs, your protein, and your fat, they all have calories. Your carbs and your protein have four calories per gram and your fat has nine calories per gram. However, when you're tracking calories, it can get pretty stressful because you're never really going to be having the same macronutrient ratio if you're just looking at the calories. Um, and that could actually change a lot of things for you on a daily basis. Like it could change the way you feel if one day you're having more fat than you are um, carbs or vice versa. And if one day you're not having barely any protein and you're having way more carbs, like these are all things to keep into account because they will change the way you feel and the results that you actually get. So this is why I really recommend once you figure out what your calories are, and I told you how to do that in my previous video that I mentioned before, once you figure out how, what your calories are, you should then figure out your macros so you can track your macros, not necessarily track your calories. And another thing to keep in mind too, your calories are 
technically not always going to be accurate on my fitness pal because um, if you add in exercise on my fitness pal then that's going to affect the calorie number and it's going to say that you have like more calories left over whereas if you're just looking at the macros it's not going to do that so you really just want to focus more on the macros like that should be what's highlighted when it comes to this app i feel like this app is just really really focused on calorie counting calorie tracking but macros should actually be more of the main focus and then of course you're still taking your calories into account by default by tracking macros but that should be what you're aiming to hit every day the macros not necessarily the calories to prevent this i actually recommend setting your calories to zero and strictly focusing on the macros in the app so if you go to settings you can set the calories to zero so that you're not going to get those alerts telling you that you're over your calories for the day and you're not going to see the numbers constantly changing on the top as you log in your food. So it's just going to list your macros now. It's not gonna show you um, what your target goal calorie number was anymore if you change the setting like that. Con number three is what I just mentioned in the previous con, but my fitness pal actually adds calories onto your day if you log your exercise. Now, technically it is true that what you burn let's say for example 500 calories if you burn 500 calories you can technically then eat another 500 calories to balance it out however here's the catch if you're trying to lose weight you don't want to balance it out you want to be in a calorie deficit so if you're exercising more now throughout the week because you're trying to lose weight then that 500 calories you burned you want to keep it burned. You don't want to re-add that back into your day by eating an extra 500 calories because then you're just gonna cancel out and then you're not gonna be in a deficit and you're not gonna lose weight. So the app doesn't really do a great job with that. Um, I think it should definitely change that based on your goal when you first start using the app um, if you say that your goal is to lose weight it should then take that into consideration um, instead of just re-adding that back into your day it should just keep it out of your day um, whereas if you were to say that you're trying to maintain your weight then it would make sense for it to like kind of add it back really not a big deal if you're not focusing on the calories in the app anyway I just wanted to point that out there because I know that was something that messed me up in the beginning. I was like, why is it saying that I have X amount of calories left for the day and why are my macros not matching my calories? So um, that is why. If you notice that your macros and, and calories aren't matching and you know, you're know you logging your exercise, that could be one of the reasons why they're not matching up. So it's best for you just not even to pay attention to the calories that are listed in the app a better way to determine your calories um, you know from the macros that are shown in the app that you are eating based on what you add in is just to do some quick math so the carbs and the protein you multiply them by four and then the fats you multiply them by nine add them all up and that is your total calorie intake that you consumed based on those macros on the nutrition page for that day Con number four is the database. So the database was also a pro that I mentioned before, but I'm also going to say that it can be a con as well because anyone can create a new food. Anyone. My dog can create a new food on my fitness pal. <laughs> and it will go into the database for anyone to use. So if you type in Apple on my fitness pal, you're going to get hundreds of entries that come up for an apple. The one that you have to look for are the ones that have the green check mark because though that means that it's verified by the app. So um, if you just choose a random one that says apple and it doesn't have the green check, it could say it has 300 carbs in it and you add it to your day and now you're like, why, why, why am I over my calories already? Like what happened? And it's because you mislogged that food. Um, because you use an entry that was just incorrect unless there's somewhere in the world that apples are 300 carbs <laughs> <laughs> Lastly con number five is that the calorie recommendations on my fitness pal just 
aren't that great, honestly. If you type in that you want to lose weight on my fitness pal, it's going to give you pretty low calories. This is something, this is like a pattern I've seen with a lot of different people, and I've done this multiple times myself. It just spits out really low calories for some reason. And like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, that is not something you should be doing. You should not be starting with really, really low calories because it's gonna make your dieting journey very difficult and almost impossible. So those are the pros and cons of my fitness pal and how to get started using the app. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up so I know to keep creating content like this for you. And if you're using any other calorie tracking apps that you think is better than MyFitnessPal, comment it below. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notified for when my next video goes up. And I'll see you in the next video.